Hello, everyone. Uh, this time, I want to talk a little bit about paranoia. And in particular, paranoia at a national level. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that these days as a result of the war on terror that's, uh, that's been ongoing since 9-11. And uh, quite frankly, this paranoia is ridiculous. Uh, we've seen the Americans uh, implement ever more draconian security theater bullshit everywhere it has any say over the past, um, you know, 15 years or so. Uh, like, seriously, you can't take a one liter bottle of water onto an airplane. Uh, you, you can't take a nail clipper onto an airplane. You, you, you can't take anything useful anywhere. Uh, and you might be barred from flying in the States if you happen to be on this no-fly list thing, and there's no way to know if you're on it, and there's no way to find out why you're on it, and there's no way to, f to correct errors uh, in the list. If you're on it, you're on it. You can't get off it. And, uh, you know, and they've, they've gone down this road of doing uh, racial profiling and invasive uh, uh, security nonsense, uh, you know, groping people up, uh, you know, uh, uh, to get on an airplane. Well, uh, if I didn't already really dislike flying, that would be enough to completely turn me off it. Um, and quite frankly, uh, if they need that kind of security theater to make people feel safe flying, then maybe you're safer not flying, right? But when you really get down to it, uh, it's not really uh, protecting people much you know, any more than uh, reasonable existing measures do. Uh, Oh, sure, they can uh, hold up the stats on this tube of gel that they uh, confiscated, which might perhaps be part of a binary explosive, or, or this, or this uh, uh, 200,000 nail clippers they've confiscated, or, or what have you. Uh, or the bottle of baby formula they took away from a, a mother. Um, I, you know, this type of thing is just stupid. And it doesn't improve security at all. Uh, and yet, if you, if you want to get on an airplane that flies anywhere near U.S. airspace, you have to abide by these rules, which are stupid. Um, oh, and did I mention these rules are stupid? Yeah, they're completely stupid. Um, now, there are some things which might be reasonable if you've got some indication that a particular individual might be higher risk, uh, something other than racial profiling, then uh, maybe a little more extensive uh, security check might be worth doing. But uh, what are the odds that... Uh, you're actually stopping somebody that, uh, uh, you know, s something that uh, wouldn't have been caught by uh, previous reasonable security measures like the, uh, the uh, uh, x-ray type stuff and, and that, uh, that business. Uh, and this paranoia is applying also to border crossing land crossings and that sort of thing as well. Although it's less paranoid going over land, uh, say from Canada, than it would be from, I don't say Mexico or, or, uh, uh, or you know, coming in uh, off a boat or something like that. But it's still a little bit insane. Uh, you've got random in-depth checks. Uh, you know, if you're the nth person through, you're going to get that in-depth interview in the back room, um, or at least a more detailed, uh, you know, set of questions and have to fill out more papers and, and all of that jazz. 
Um, you know, it's, I've been through that a couple of times. And for the most part, it's not too bad, but they will often uh, ask you uh, a bunch of questions. You know, they'll do the usual thing, ask you a bunch of questions, ask you another question that uh, you know implies an opposite answer to something you already answered or something like that. Um, that's just to see if you're... That, that's actually uh, what they... They use that to check to see if you're, uh, you're telling a lie uh, about stuff because it's harder to keep a lie straight when things are happening in random orders than if it goes in the order that you've rehearsed the narrative. But they can do that while you're in your car when they're checking your, running your passport and asking you the uh, pre-screening questions. So, uh, for the most part, you know, you have, have all that. Uh, but now they're doing things like asking for social media passwords, uh, at least for some subset of travelers. And that's ridiculous. The social media accounts are not at the border. Okay? They shouldn't have any right to search them. Maybe you can squint at it right, the right way and come up with a justification for them to search your phone or your laptop, which is at the border. That's still a fishing expedition, unless they have an actual cause, which they should be able to articulate to you, um, then they shouldn't be doing that. But let's just say they've decided they have a reason to do an in-depth search, so they're going to search, and, uh, they've, and you've got your, your uh, phone, and they'll ask you to unlock it. Okay, that you can kind of squint at and maybe justify that. But your email is not at the border, uh, especially if you're doing uh, if you're doing uh, IMAP. The email's not at the border. Uh, if your uh, uh, your social media account is not at the border. Um, because if you can justify it by saying, well, you can access it from the border, well, then you can justify invading, invading it at any time by saying it's at the border, whether the person is or not. So, no, that can't fly. You know, so asking for people's passwords to social media accounts and so on uh, is ridiculous, and it shouldn't be done. Uh, there should be no authority to do it. Looking at their public profile is fine. That's public, right? But you should not have any rights to see their private stuff, the, the login on the private side. So seeing the tweets I've made on Twitter, that's fine. Anybody can see that, so the border people can see that too. So if they want to look at my Twitter account, they can look at my Twitter account, if they can figure out which one it is. If they, they can look at my YouTube videos, they can, they can look at all of that stuff, but they have no justification to uh, access anything else, at least not without some sort of legal oversight. And uh, quite frankly, I'm worried about the state of legal oversight in most countries as well, but because the judges tend to just rubber stamp anything that the uh, authorities want. But uh, at least there's a chance of some sort of oversight, and I should have a chance to, uh, to know why they want it before I give it to them, uh, even if they have somehow determined that they have a right to it. Uh, so, and here's the thing. Giving your password to most of these social media accounts or whatever, to anybody other than yourself law enforcement or otherwise, violates the terms of service. So, uh, realistically, as soon as you do that, the social media operation should be able to take your account down. And uh, what is law enforcement going to do then if uh, you've somehow tipped them off or something like that? But, uh, realistically, uh, this paranoia at borders has really gotten out of hand. Uh, and I think we need to take a step back and look at what are we actually trying to do? 
What are we trying to achieve? And what's actually going to achieve it? Not look like it's going to achieve it, but what's actually going to achieve it? Is this measure we've taken actually having an impact? Let's do some scientific analysis of these things and find out if they work or if they work more than minimally. If they don't work, we should stop doing it. It's a waste of everybody's time, the border people, the everybody. And I think we'll find that for the most part, most of the stuff that, that uh, this paranoid stuff that uh, is getting implemented more and more over, over time, it's not improving security. Uh, you know, if you're trying to keep terrorists out, well, you gotta consider how many terrorists are homegrown? You're not going to keep a homegrown terrorist out. They're already there. How many terrorists have no clue, no indication that they lean that way until they actually do something? So you're not going to be able to keep those guys out. And the known terrorists, well, you know who they are. So you can make their life difficult without making everybody's life difficult, right? You know, and I don't think we're any safer now with these extra draconian checks on airplanes and, and this paranoia at borders. I don't think we're any safer now than we were before. And realistically, that, that's really the important thing. Are we safer as a result? If not, then we should just stop doing this stuff. If we are, then we have to consider how much safer are we? What have we actually stopped? And what, was the, what would the cost have been if we hadn't? And what was the cost of doing all of this? And, and you know, do that real cost-benefit analysis. Unfortunately, the general public sucks at that sort of thing. And as a result, will not tend to hold their uh, their officials accountable in the democratic-ish countries. And as a result, uh, you get the flashy things getting through and getting implemented because it looks like doing something, the security theater. And that's what almost what almost all of this stuff is. It's security theater and also power grabs by the people that are uh, enforcing the rules. Uh, like you take a look at some of the things that uh, police are allowed to do. It's ridiculous. The militarization of police forces is ridiculous. So let's, let's let go of our damn paranoia and start actually behaving like people again. Anyway, that's probably enough of a ramble on this, uh, so I'm going to uh, leave off here. I'm gonna, probably going to start going in circles now. I'm definitely going to go off topic, so uh, that's all for this time. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications with that stupid bell icon. Uh, if you liked the video, or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike, whichever you want. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.